Hello, and thank you so much to everyone for joining us. I'm joined by Roz from the RNLI's on water safety team, and she's here to tell us a few tips about how to stay safe on the water. Last year, we saw a huge influx of people getting into water sports, which was fantastic. And equally, we saw some people who've been involved in water sports and sailing for many years, taking a little bit of time off the water. So we want to make sure that everyone's nice and safe when we get back out on the water this summer. Roz, can you tell us a little bit more about the RNLI? Sure, Hannah. So thank you very much for having me here. Um, so just a little bit about the RNLI before we get started. So the RNLI is a charity that's been saving lives for sea for over 200 years. Um, it's made up of our dedicated volunteers that run a 24-7, uh, 365 day a year lifeboat service. And that lifeboat service is across our 238 lifeboat stations. Now, these lifeboats and their crew go out in any weather conditions to rescue those that might need help on the water. Um, not all of our lifeboat stations are actually located on the coast. You might be aware or might not be aware that we actually have some lifeboat stations on the River Thames. In fact, our busiest station is Tower, which is located on the River Thames. Um, as well as our lifeboat service, we've also got our lifeguards as well on the beaches, keeping people safe in and around the water. That's so interesting. I never knew that there was a lifeboat station on the Thames, actually. <laughs> Can you just give us a couple of tips for people to keep safe on the water? Uh, yeah, so it's been winter. We might have had some of our equipment being stored away for the winter. So we might have been not out on the water as much as what we would have in the past. And um, so you might have windsurf kit that's been in the garage. You might have had your boat, which has been locked away nice and safe with the covers on it at the club or boat park. Um, so thinking about that top tips of being safe, it's really important that you do your prep beforehand. So whenever we're talking about equipment, that's making sure that you check everything really thoroughly. So you're going through your boat, over, through your windsurf kit, and you want to check everything from top to toe. So you're looking at sort of any fixtures and fittings, any of the rigging, any frayed or damaged lines. Um, you want to make sure that around your rudder, that that's all in good working order. Any knots, you want to make sure that all your knots are done up correctly and redo them if you're not too sure. Um, in terms of windsurf kit as well, you want to have a check of things like your UJ, make sure there's no cracks in that. Uh, check again any lines, any outhauls, downhauls. It's just having that really good check of all of your equipment before you go anywhere near the water. And by doing that, it will prevent anything. Breakages can happen. But by doing those checks beforehand, before you go out onto the water, it's making sure that you don't sustain any damages on the water that might result in calling out the emergency services. So being prepared is, is really important for that before you go out onto the water. Um, also thinking about under that umbrella of being prepared, um, you want to also check the weather forecast as well. Now, as sailors, the wind is really important to us. It what helps us do our sport. We need it to do our sport. But it's, it's checking the forecast and sort of having that really honest conversation with yourself and, you know, looking at the forecast and going, OK, I've maybe not been out in a little while. Is this forecast, is this wind strength within my capabilities? Am I going to be able to manage it? Or should I maybe go out on another day whenever it's, well, it's not so strong? So it's really having that honest conversation with yourself about, is this what I can handle with um, maybe not having been out in practice like you might have done in the summer? So it's just looking at the forecast as well. Again, if you're looking at the forecast, you want to have a look at temperature also. So it's not just all about the wind. Have a look at how warm it's going to be. So the water is still pretty cold, it's, um, it's not heated up. So you want to think about what sort of stuff that you're going to be wearing whenever you go out onto the water, stuff that will keep you quite warm. Um, as sailors or windsurfers, you might not plan to go into the water, but there might be a chance that you could. And if you are in the water for maybe longer than you expected, then you want to make sure that you've got stuff that's going to, you're wearing stuff that's going to keep you warm. So thinking about sort of winter wetsuits, 
maybe dry suits, you want to think about gloves that you might wear for your sport, uh, maybe booties, and also maybe like a hat. I know I wear a neoprene hat as well to keep me warm. So it's it's thinking about keeping yourself warm whenever you're out on the water. Um, also, if it's uh, applicable to where you're sailing, you want to have a look at the tide times as well. So make sure that you understand the tides and know what that actually looks like at your location. So if you know when high tide is, have a look and, and see, figure out what that would look like at your location. Low tide, make sure you know what it looks like at the location that you're going to be sailing in. Um, so that kind of all comes under the umbrella of making sure that you are prepared. So that's the sort of, before you go in and do it, we're near the water. So um, I guess the exciting part, whenever it's a uh, sailing day and you're going out onto the water, there's a couple of things, top tips that you need to think about as well. So you always want to make sure that you take a means of calling for help. Uh, you want to have a flotation device with you. Um, and you also want to tell somebody where you're going. So tell them when you're going, tell them when you expect to be back. And really important, whenever you do come back, make sure you give them that call to say that you're back, you're off the water, everything's okay, and you're just putting away your kit now. So really important to tell somebody where you're going. And just, uh, just lastly as well, uh, a last sort of top tip for... Uh, whenever you go out onto the water is to make sure that you develop your skills also so thinking about that skill set um, the RYA do some really fantastic training courses on dinghy sailing and windsurfing so it's really a bit about making sure that you can develop your skills and keep your skills and practice them and keep them up to date um, and you might want to think about joining a club as well because that's really good access into keeping those skills up to date as well. So those are kind of the top tips for getting back onto the water. Great, thank you. I think there were some really good tips there. Also provide a bit of peace of mind for people that they have done those checks before they do get out on the water. You mentioned uh, the ability to call for help. Can you just tell us a little bit more about how you would do that and why it's important? Yeah, so very important that you always take a means of calling for help with you um, and that you make sure that that means of calling for help is actually on your person. Um, so however you want to attach that um, if if you were to put it with your kit then and maybe you were to become attached from your kit so detached from your dinghy detached from your your windsurf rig and um, if that calling means of calling for help is with your kit then it, it doesn't serve any purpose for you so you have to make sure that that means of calling for help is with you um, so as so it's sailors, thingy sailors and windsurfers, the sort of things that devices that you might want to be thinking about are maybe handheld VHF radios, uh, maybe PLB, so personal locator beacons, or even just a mobile phone and having the mobile phone and the sort of waterproof pouches that you can get. And they're quite easily accessible um, and not that expensive as well. So having a mobile phone and a waterproof pouch is a really good idea. Um, and also, if you do decide to take a mobile phone out with you, then it's a really good idea to download the RYA Safe Tracks app. Um, so, as well as it being a really good app, uh, it's also really important in terms of safety as well. So, you can actually on the Safe Tracks app, you can uh, put in your route or your course that you're going to be doing, and it can actually track you. Uh, along the way of you doing that course or doing your route and if anything was to happen to you out on the water and you needed to call the coast guard for any reason or the coast guard needed, needed to be alerted for any reason they would have a sort of direct link to you and a direct link to the information that you had through the RYA Safe Tracks app so it's a really fantastic app but it's also a really good safety precaution as well so if you have your mobile phone RYA Safe Tracks app um, is a good thing to put on there. Um, also, as well, we know a lot of people are maybe going out in organised groups or in their sailing club, and they might have a means of calling for help within that group or within that club. But it's also good practice to have that yourself. Um, so, yeah, whenever you go out on the water, always make sure that you take a means of calling for help. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's great that there's so much kind of technology these days that can help 
help us with that kind of thing the invention of apps and things and being able to yeah. take phone on the waters made that a lot easier going back to something kind of more of a, a staple bit of equipment can you tell us a little bit about flotation devices and the things you need to think about in regard to that yeah so the same with them um, you know taking a means of calling for help it's also incredibly important that you have a flotation device or you're wearing a flotation device i should say so depending on what activity that you're doing will determine what flotation device it is that you're going to use whenever you're out on the water. Um, but there's some common things that you want to consider uh, whenever you've got this flotation device. So first of all, you want to make sure that it's, it's comfortable um, because if it's comfortable, it means you're going to like wearing it. If it's not comfortable, you won't want to wear it. Um, and it might turn out that there's a day where you just decide not to wear it because it's not comfortable. Um, and that's the worst thing, really. So you want to have a flotation device which is comfortable for you to wear. Um, make sure that it's correctly fitted as well. Uh, you want to make sure that you check the weight limits of that flotation device. Uh, if the flotation device has any crotch straps, then you want to wear the crotch straps because what that does is it stops it from riding up. So, for example, if it's a point aid, if you put the crotch straps on, it will keep it around that sort of torso area and that will keep you up on the water and help you, well, it will make it easier for you to swim. If you're wearing a life jacket, again, you want to wear the crotch straps for your life jacket because it will keep it, you know, keep it down, down from here. So it will keep your head up out of the water and um, so it will keep your airways clear of the water. So just making sure that everything's fitted correctly really. Um, in terms of buoyancy aids in particular, you maybe your buoyancy aid has been sitting and not got used for a little while. So there's some checks that you can do with your buoyancy aid. So in terms of um, the foam of the buoyancy aid, you want to make sure that the foam is not compressed in any way. Uh, so all you need to do for that is just have a feel of the buoyancy aid and make sure it's not compressed um, because it needs to offer you the right amount of flotation. Um, sticking with the buoyancy aids, you also want to have a little sort of visual check of everything. So you want to look over things like the webbing, make sure there's no damage to that. You want to also check um, any stitching, make sure that's not frayed in any way. Uh, buckles as well, so make sure on your buoyancy aid you're having a look at the buckles, make sure they fasten and unfasten. Um, and zips as well on the buoyancy aids. So there's a variety of ways that the buoyancy aids can do up. Some will be over your head um, and you'll pull them tight and other ones will be zips up the front. Uh, some will be over the side and then a zip at the side. So there's a, there's a whole host of variety of ways that the buoyancy aid can do up, um, but it's just making sure that it does do up and it stays done up as well. Um, it's good practice also after being out on the water that you just wash off the buoyancy aids and get so many of the salt water off it and that will just make it last that little bit longer. Um, if you do have a life jacket as well, depending on maybe if you're out on your powerboat, um, if you have a life jacket, then you there are some basic checks that you can do with a life jacket. Uh, but it's really important that you get it serviced and you follow the manufacturer's guidelines to when that is and what it is that you need to get serviced with that. Great, thank you. And do you have any tips kind of specifically for those going out, either in power boats or maybe safety boats for dinghy sailors, windsurfing, those kind of people? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, thinking about maybe those people who are going out in power boats as um, sort of safety cover for their club. Um, so it goes back to what we were saying before. It's all about doing those checks. So spending the time beforehand going through absolutely everything on the boat so a thorough check of everything um, and you don't want to leave it to the day that your sailors are going out so make sure that you you go beforehand and do an absolute thorough check of, of the boat and it's putting in putting in place those sort of proactive measures on your safety boat so if you in terms of safety boat cover it's making sure that you you do have things like um, a call for help device and that's on you um, you have a kill cord and uh, you maybe have a spare kill cord as well, which is really good practice. Um, and it's good to have that kill cord on, that spare kill cord on you as well. So you're not hunting for in your boat or anything. So that's really good to have. Um, sometimes 
you know, you, engines stop and you can't get your engine started again whenever you're on the water. So you want to make sure that you have um, a separate means of propulsion. So having a paddle on board, and it just needs to be a small paddle, is, is really good. Um, so things, and if, uh, thinking about that safety boat cover as well, it's, it's quite good to have maybe a throw bag or a throw line easily accessible. So those sort of proactive measures, it's good to have them on board and have them quickly and easily accessible. Um, now, in terms of checking the boat and checking the engine, again, you want to spend time doing that before you do go out as possibly a safety boat cover. Um, but some of the very basic things that you want to check for your boat is making sure that the sponsons are inflated properly. Um, so if the boat's been put away for the winter, um, and it's now the first time that it's coming out, make sure that you, you do check that over. Um, other things, whenever you get the boat out onto the water, you want to make sure that the telltales are, are working fine, that you've got that water moving through the engine. Um, you also want to make sure that you, the steering's correct as well, so depending on which power boats, as whether it's a tiller steering or a wheel that you're steering, then you want to make sure that um, you have the full range of movement whenever you're in your power boat as well, and making sure that the engine responds to that in the same way. So it's just all about doing those really thorough checks of your engine and of your boat, um, and also putting in those proactive measures as well. So yeah, but doing a thorough check in advance really. So I guess my um, kind of takeaway message from what you said there is that you do need to take a bit of time just to prepare yourself and your kit and make sure you know the conditions that you're heading out into. And I think, um, you know, if people can take that as their, their message from your talk there, I think we'll all be a little bit safer on the water. So that was really great, really informative. Thank you so much for all of your tips there, Roz. And hopefully um, you won't get too many calls over the summer, but it's really great to know that there are people there kind of looking out for those who do get out on the water. So thank you. Yeah, if you're looking for any other information, then you can always go on to the RNLI um, website and that can give you some information on safety and also the RYE have some safety pages as well that they'll be able to give you some further information. So, yeah. Thank Brilliant. you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.